friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time here for today's video. I'm so excited. I'm going to be doing my end of 2020 book haul. I have accumulated a bunch of books recently and a ton of these are actually going to be featured in tomorrow's video which will be what books I want to read in 2021. I know I was supposed to be posting that today but just because I was supposed to be doing that today I will just be posting it tomorrow instead. I woke up super late today because I was up 5 a.m finishing one of these books and starting one of these books. Some of these I have read, others yet again I want to read in 2021, so let's just get into it because I'm so excited for all of these books. So the first ones I will start with are the ones I picked up from Barnes & Noble. So I took two separate trips. I did a mobile order, actually I did three different ones, oh shoot. I did an online order, I did a mobile order, and then I went in store and physically bought books. Oh shit, okay, I didn't realize that until just now. But I have a ton of books to mention and I'm so excited so I keep showing these two off and unfortunately I do not believe I'm going to be able to get to them this year in 2020 but these are going to be the first books I pick up in 2021 these are both from Talia Hibbert they are the first oh the first and second book in the Brown Sisters series and I'm just so excited I've heard unbelievable things the first is Get a Life Chloe Brown and the second is Take a Hint Danny Brown. So I also have the third, I keep saying it, in eARC. So I will be reading all three of these, doing videos. This is a companion standalone series. You can read each of these individually, but I am so excited to be experiencing the entire companion series as a whole. The next two books I have are the first two books are part of the Kyoshi spin-off book series, which this is a part of the Avatar, The Last Airbender World. I've been really wanting to pick up this sort of series. The last book actually came out this year, so this is the Barnes Noble exclusive edition that has like special content and I wanted that of this one. They didn't have it in person but I am still so excited. I absolutely love Avatar Kyoshi. She is such a boss ass bitch. Heard unbelievable things when it comes to actually meeting her and seeing her perspective and the romance in here but the adventure itself and I just think I'm so looking forward to it because I absolutely love Avatar Kyoshi. The next book I picked up is The Inheritance Games and this is from Jennifer Lynn Barnes and I am so excited excited for this one. This just seems like a very different YA novel from ones I've been picking up or ones I've been seeing published. So this is about our main female character who comes from nothing and one day gets contacted because a man passes away and inherited his entire fortune to her. She's never met this man. She doesn't really understand why this is happening but she goes to the property and ends up meeting the family and the family is pissed off. So I believe this kind of enforces some sort of game in a way and I just have heard our main character is very smart. I've heard this whole assortment of games is so unique and captivating to read. It's also been compared to one of my all-time favorite movies which is Knives Out. I think tonally I can see where that connection is being drawn from the summary but I cannot wait to experience the story myself. Next I have the fifth season which is from N.K. Jemisin and I am so excited to be reading more of this author's works. This is my first book I would be ever reading from this author and I've heard unbelievable things when it comes to their stories especially this. This is the first book a part of the Broken Earth trilogy which is a fantasy series and I've heard the romance is amazing, the characters are amazing, the fantasy, her writing, like uh I really want to get more into various different authors next year. I'll talk about it yet again in my reading goals and resolutions for 2021, but that's a huge goal of mine. And so this is just like the starting point. Now, this is just so funny to me because long story short, like I said, I placed an online order. I picked up the hardcover of From Blood and Ash from Jennifer Armanchow. I saw Myona from Myona Reads. I always talk about her. I absolutely love her. This is nothing new, but she had hauled it and I saw her haul the hardcovers and I was like fuck I need them so I picked them up and they're like $30 do I regret it absolutely not this is one of my all-time favorite books especially for this year and all time so I don't regret this at all but I also picked up the second book and when I got it it was so sad. There was like weirdly like glue in the actual packaging which attached itself to the dust jacket and then I had to take my blow dryer and try to 
tear it off because it was literally glued to the packaging. It was a mess. I had to return it. So I now have a new one right here. This is what she looks like. This is the second book, which is called Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. I keep talking about these books. So even if you don't hear it from me, you probably have seen them all over Goodreads, Twitter, Instagram, everything. I love them so much. I'm so excited to be tabbing them up and reading them actually in January yet again I keep talking about it but a huge goal of mine is to do an entire like review month so I'm going to be having in-depth like discussion videos for these books because I have so much to say like even for this book I have so much to say about this book in conclusion the third book like oh I'm just so excited I love this series new adult fantasy cannot say enough good things next I have three books from fairy loot so in October I was finally off the wait list and got accepted to get on the subscription list so I have the October November and December if you haven't watched I did just recently unbox the two November and December boxes but the first one I have the October pick was Kingdom of the Wicked from Carrie Maniscalco and I have read this also I have to say this edition is one of the most beautiful books I have ever experienced in my life I have ever possessed I'm never getting rid of it yada 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 this is actually one of my favorite books of the year even though it's not a perfect book and because I can't stop thinking about it now the concept behind this book I really enjoyed we have a main character which who ends up getting in contact with one of the seven princes of hell which are the seven deadly sins and I really loved it. It's in kind of a alternate reality to our reality in Palermo, Italy. And I really love the whole concept. I do have to say, I don't think Carrie Maniscalco is the strongest writer. I will have a whole discussion video for this book, so I'll go more in depth. But I think in general, this is a great foundation book. And I think for the rest in this series, she has so much potential with this series to go in various places, which is why I want to do a discussion video because I have so many thoughts about it. And I really hope she does. Like, I really hope she does take it there because this, yet again, is just a really good first book. And I think she can really take it to the next level in the next few books or next book. I don't know how many she's planning on in this series. The November pick was These Violent Delights. And this is the book I am currently reading. So I'm not too far into this. I think I'm on page like 50, but it's an e-arc. So it's kind of a little bit different. It's really good. It's another historical fiction, 1920s in Shanghai. We do follow kind of like an alternate reality to our reality as well. And it is a Juliet and Romeo retelling, which I'm really enjoying, but I'm just really excited. This is the author's debut novel and I love her. She's just so fun on TikTok, on Twitter, everything. So it's just such a fun experience to finally be reading this book, especially because I love the author so much. So. I will be having more of my thoughts out on this as well. I think I'm also going to be doing a discussion video for this. I think it will probably be out in January yet again. I just am going to be posting a ton of review videos then. And then December's book was Master of One from Jada Jones and Danny Bennett. And I still haven't actually looked at the summary, guys. I'm so sorry. So I'm just going to read off the back really quickly. It says, Welcome to the Queen City, a terrible place to live, an excellent place to die. It's obviously a fantasy, a YA one at that. So I'm excited excited to see what this is about because I have no concept really of what it is. Next I have a deal with the Elf King which is from Elise Kova and this is the first book a part of the A Married to Magic novel series which is a standalone fantasy series. I'm not gonna lie I kept seeing this all over Twitter and Instagram and the undercover sent me like this is a beautiful book and Y'all know I can't help but absolutely love some beautiful editions. So I ended up reading this. Yet again, it is a standalone fantasy, which I love. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Found the romance in itself wasn't really what I was expecting. I didn't really love, love, love our characters. I think I really enjoyed them. I don't really think it came across the page as much as I wanted to. I didn't really feel like it was so vivid and like tangible in a way. I really wanted more. I wanted more in depth. Like this is a pretty short book. Like especially for a standalone, I really think a standalone, a good fantasy standalone, has to stand strong in the world building in our characters the character growth the dynamic of their relationship and that's the whole point of this it's supposed to be like a romance not new adult i don't want to say that i think our character is that age gap but it is more almost like ya written because we're not in detail like from blood and ash anyway so 
I did like it yet again. I think it's a good fantasy standalone. I'm curious about the others in this series, but it wasn't my favorite. Next, we have one that I was sent to read and review, and I finished this last night, and it was so good. This is a historical fiction romance. It is called Her Wicked Marquise, and this is from Stacey Reed. It's the second book, a part of the Sinful Wallflower series. I loved it. This doesn't come out until, what's today's date? Is it the 29th? Tomorrow, the 29th. So if you want to pick it up, you can. The first book is called My Darling Duke. I really did enjoy the first book. I think my biggest complaint with the first book was I wanted to just kind of immediately almost get that development between our two characters and really get it kind of flowing. It seemed like the pace, especially in the beginning, was a little bit slow for me. But oh my gosh, she does slow burn romance so well. There's something about these that yes, they're historical fiction romances and especially because I've been trying to get into them. I've been reading some and I really do enjoy them, but this is something so different. She has a way when it comes to her characters of really getting you to feel for them and in them and understand them and separately from the relationship and also together in their dynamic. I loved the banter. I loved these characters. Oh, this was just such a good second book a part of this standalone series. So yet again, it is a standalone companion series. I can't wait for the third whenever it does come out. So I'm really excited I picked this up. I think I'm also going to be having a book review out tomorrow. Hopefully, if not the following day, but a review video for the first and second book will be out very soon. Next book I have is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, and this is from V.E. Schwab. This is another one that I want to read before the end of this year. Hopefully, I'll get to it soon. I really want to read and finish tonight these Violet Delights, and then I think I want to get to A Song of Wrath and Ruins, and then I will get on to The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. But I keep hearing yet again, I keep saying this, either very positive things or very negative things. This is a fantasy standalone and our main character is cursed. And every time she meets someone, when they leave her, they will end up forgetting her. So she goes 300 years with this happening until one day a man actually remembers her in the bookstore. So it kind of changes her life forever. This is a beautiful edition. I forget where I picked this up. It's like Planet something. Oh my goodness. It took forever to come, but this is literally one of the most beautiful yet again editions I have. So I'm just really hoping I like this book. Like I am. I'm not gonna lie. I hope I am one of those people that actually do because this cover and this edition I got is so pretty that I'm like, fuck. I think I said the same thing for, what is that book? A Kingdom of the Wicked. I was like, even if I don't like that book, I'll probably still keep it. And the same for this, even if I don't like it, I'll probably still keep it because the edition I got is so pretty. Look at these pages, are you kidding? Next, I picked up the exclusive Alcrate edition of Where Dreams Descend from Danella Angelis, and I am just so excited for this because it is a magician circus-esque story. I keep talking about this, but I really want to pick this up, and this cover, I was obsessed with this edition personally. When I saw that they came out with it, I really wanted to buy it for myself, but I held back. And then I saw that Mercari, someone was selling it for a really good price and they had like these stickers attached and the author letter that came with it. I was like, you know what? I'll pick it up because it's so pretty. Like this is such a gorgeous edition. I'm not even going to lie. I really do actually like it when it doesn't come with a dust jacket. There's something about those editions where it's just so beautiful on the undercover that I really appreciate. The next one I have, I am so excited to read this. It is The Bridge Kingdom from Dan Danielle L. Jensen. Danielle L. Jensen wrote one of my favorite books back in 2015, which was Stolen Songbird. It's the Malediction Trilogy. If you've been on my channel for a while, like you guys know I used to always talk about that book. I had not read that book in the longest time, but I loved it. It's about trolls and the romance was so good. I kept hearing how people loved Bridge Kingdom and actually a lot of people started comparing it to From Blood and Ash and this was out first and yet again I love Danielle L. Jensen's other series and the fact that people are comparing it to another one of my favorite books and also this just sounds fantastic in itself. I had to pick it up. Now this is the Bay Crate exclusive edition because I saw that they were selling it on Markari and I had to get it. Like 
you guys know I keep getting these exclusive editions, but if I'm physically getting a book, especially a book that I know I'm going to love or potentially love, I would rather get this exclusive beautiful edition and potentially either resell it or give it to someone else rather than miss out on it and hate myself if I end up loving the book. So even if I don't love this, I'm still so happy I have this edition because it is so beautiful. And I know they came out with a second one for the second book, uh, Bait Crate did, the limited edition one. So I'm gonna have to try to figure out how I can get that one. But regardless, I cannot wait to read this. And this is definitely one of those books I'm reading in 2021. Last but not least, we got one of my favorite books of 2020. I literally saw this exclusive edition that Owl Crate came out. And I was like, you know what? I do want that. I do, I do want her, I deserve her. Someone was selling it yet again for a really good price. So I picked up the Owl Crate edition of Legend Born from Tracy Dion. And this one is so cool to me because the original is more blue based and this one actually is more red based. So it is signed, it comes with the letter. I'm so excited. I keep talking and talking and talking about this book and I was going to just pick up a normal edition but when I saw that someone was selling it yet again, I had to pick it up so it is signed it's just so beautiful like ah oh, let's open and reveal the dust jacket i keep talking about this book if you've not picked it up yet i highly recommend it it's one of my favorite books of this year by far one of my favorite debut novels I've ever read and I cannot wait for more in this series. So those are all the books I had to show off. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have read any of these, let me know your thoughts and what books did you recently pick up for the end of 2020? I'm very curious to hear it, but I cannot wait for 2021. I keep talking about it. I have so many plans in mind, like reviewing and reading a ton of these books. I love doing review videos and that's something I really want to do more in 2021 so I hope you guys are excited as well. If you do also want to tell me which ones you want to specifically see review videos for, let me know. And let me know if you want discussions or just like spoiler free ones because I like doing both. I think it depends on the book itself and how much I have to say about it. Anyway, I will see you guys in my next video which will be tomorrow's for what books I want to read in 2021. Bye!